Welcome to One on One with Expert Flyer, where we bring you the inside scoop from industry experts and innovators. I'm your host, Lisa Kaslin, and I'm very excited to introduce Captain Tom Bunn. He's with us today to talk about a topic that uh, is near and dear to many people's hearts who like to travel, and that is the fear of flying. Welcome, Captain Bunn. Nice Thank to you, here. Lisa. Glad to be here. Great. Well, there is a couple of elephants in the room, maybe mm. two, maybe three, who knows? But uh, the most recent elephant in the room is the German Wings flight uh, crash that happened uh, three weeks uh, ago or so. And some news has come to light recently. And that's why we, we called upon you uh, and your expertise as a, as a licensed therapist and expert in fear of flying. Uh, relative to the co-pilot's, you know, mental condition. So, you know, it's it's come to light that uh, before the crash, he was researching suicide methods and and all of this all, all of this stuff. And we just wondered, you know, from your perspective as someone who captained, you know, commercial airlines, and now you help people who are afraid to fly. Yeah. What do you think of all of that? <sighs> <laughs> I don't know people that I worked with who would be doing that. It's obviously something that's shocking to everybody, not only the public, but to pilots as well. Now, when you get a job with the airline, they do some screening, they give you some tests and all that. What happens later? Well, who knows? But as a pilot, you if you want to keep your job, you don't disclose having mental problems. Uh, in fact, the FAA in the U.S., if you um, want to go to a therapist, you have to be kind of careful. If you take uh, certain meds, then they'll ground you. So people generally go underground with it. You know, that it's not the only thing that can go wrong in terms of mental health because everybody knows about alcohol. Mm -hmm. Up until, uh, well, for a while, all the airlines would simply fire any pilot who had a drinking problem. And... Pitney Bowes came up with a program saying, look, wait a minute, this is not a character issue necessarily. It's also a, it's a, it's a health issue. So they said, okay, to their employees, if you have a drinking problem, let us know. We'll work with you. We'll send you to a program. We'll help you get over it. And then if things work out, you're back. And so when the airlines took over that approach, suddenly our problems with alcohol <laughs> went away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, frankly, we were covering sometimes for other pilots before the airline that I worked for said, hey, we'll work with you. But after that, we said, no, we're not going to cover for people anymore. We will talk to the union. The union would then talk to the people, say, look, you need help with this. And it, mm -hmm. it worked out. Whether that can happen with this problem, I don't know, because um, if it's this difficult, if it's, if it's to the point of suicide, uh, I don't think. Um, people when they get into that state are pretty much loners. Yeah. So I don't know if it's going to help. Yeah. Well, we, we, we have to hope that, you know, and I think, you know, uh, there's been a lot of evolution in terms of, you know, destigmatizing mental health. And I think that there's carryover, you know, across many industries now, and hopefully, you know, it, it, it will improve. Yeah, you know, hopefully. Yeah. yeah and transportation it, as well. it's going to take some real focus to get something significant to happen. However, what I've been telling people here in the U.S. is that this couldn't have happened to the U.S. because of the two person cockpit rule. If, yeah, talk about that. I'm, yeah. I'm interested to, to understand how that all works. Well, it, it it comes to this. Let's say the captain or the co-pilot are in the cockpit. The captain needs to go back to the toilet, gets on the interphone, asks the flight attendant to come into the cockpit, mm -hmm. who then stands by the door. Um, captain goes back to the toilet. Uh, in the German wing situation, after the, co co the captain wanted to come back, co he couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. Because the co-pilot has had used the override mm -hmm. so that his key code put into the door wouldn't work. Well, mm -hmm. if the flight attendant is standing there, obviously the flight attendant could open the door. So that means it couldn't have happened in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Which is comforting. Yes. <laughs> now, and, and as you see, other airlines now, suddenly every airline is, is, is picking up this uh, protocol that we had, fortunately. Yeah, I mean... It, it, Talk about, you know, this, you know, real or imagined fear when someone is just, you know, 
paralyzed by the thought of, and, and it could be a million different things. It could be fear of technical failure. It could be fear of, oh my goodness, you know, turbulence and weather. Now it could be, you know, fear of terrorism. How do you pull somebody off the proverbial ledge when they come to you and they say, hey, I need help? Well, up until now, <laughs> anyway, I would say if you really understand how the plane works and the backup systems and so on, you'll be intellectually satisfied. But this introduces a new problem because the one person you have to trust is a pilot. And if just one time in recent history, there's been a pilot you can't trust, that throws a monkey wrench in this. Yeah. And, and it's hard for people who feel not so safe in the world to say, well, it's not very likely. Mm -hmm. And they, they want to say, I want to know it's impossible. That ain't going to happen. It's possible. It's rare. And you can see it, it is very rare. But we, we're never going to be able to totally rule out this possibility. Okay, but you have a very, well, first we should mention that um, not only are you uh, a very experienced uh, commercial uh, airline captain, but you're also a licensed clinical social worker. You specialize in help, yeah. uh, helping people get, and your program is called SOAR. It's also a book, right? Um, in that in that book, uh, you talk about some unconventional methods which sort of trigger these naturally occurring hormones that have a calming effect. Talk a little yeah. bit about how, you know, someone like me who might be afraid yeah. to get on a plane okay. could use that. Well, we have had a particular kind of therapy be dominant for the last 20 or 30 years, which is cognitive therapy. And the idea is that what happens in the mind gives you certain feelings. Well, we now know that that's not the whole ball game. Things that happen automatically out of unconsciousness also cause feelings. For example, if you were up on a step ladder painting the ceiling and started to fall, you will get a shot of stress hormones, which is a good thing. Hey, stop worrying about the ceiling. You're headed toward the floor. Now, when you're in the airplane, that's going to happen too. When the plane drops, you're going to get a shot of stress hormones. Okay, but it doesn't just drop once, right? It drops again and again and again, and the stress hormones build up. That causes a problem. And this goes all the way back to 1908 with Dotson and Yerkes at Harvard. They discovered that when stress hormones rise, the ability of to think goes down mm -hmm. to the point where it can just totally shut down. What goes wrong for people in the airplane is that when they lose their ability to differentiate what they're imagining from what is real, then when they start imagining that the plane is falling out of the sky, for them, the plane is falling out of the sky. Now you've changed everything because now the person has had a near-death experience as far as they're concerned. And this is where, it's, where it gets tricky. And therapists generally talk about relearning, relearning, but once the amygdala has had a near-death experience, it doesn't want to learn anymore. It says, I'm sticking with that. So what we're going to have to do is simply say, all right, if you're intellectually satisfied that flying is okay, let's just see if we can just turn the amygdala off. Like if your smoke alarm was uh, going off and you were clicking and you knew it wasn't a problem, you could take the battery out, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take the battery out of the part of the brain that releases stress hormones called the amygdala. Mm -hmm. And we, to do that, we look for oxytocin. Mm -hmm. Nature has set it up for us when we produce this hormone oxytocin for the fear system to shut down. It happens, for example, when a mother's nursing a child. That's the priority nature wants set up take care of the, the child's needs. So the mother loses her concern about um, anything else that she might get anxious about, takes care of the baby. Go back nine months to when two people have good chemistry going with each other and do what's necessary to make a baby. That also produces oxytocin. So I would ask a mother who's nurse to look for that because it produces more oxytocin. Link that to each moment of flying. Mm -hmm. If it was... Uh, a, a person who hasn't had that experience, certainly guys don't, but mm -hmm. I'd look for a moment of good sexual chemistry and find the oxytocin. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interestingly enough, if you have a dog and you gaze into your dog's eyes, that also produces oxytocin. <laughs> so it, wherever the reliable source is, you know, look for it and then we link each moment of flight so that as the flight unfolds, things are going to happen on the flight that trigger unconscious recall of an oxytocin-producing moment 
produce the oxytocin, keeps the amygdala shut down. I Get on the plane, it. fly like everybody else. I love it. I love it. I love it. And 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 you know what? You don't need a prescription. No, you've got it your own self. You don't need to, you know, it's it's be, it's more effective than any prescription you can get. That's it. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. And if anybody needs more information, uh, they can check out the blog. We're going to do a uh, comprehensive Q&A with Captain Bunn. And you should also check out his site. It's uh, fearofflying.com, right? That's it. That's yep. It? Terrific. Thank you so much. Thank Captain. you, Lisa. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.